Hello there. I wanted to quickly talk to you about uh, how computers work, or why they're useful. A brief little exploration. So here I want to look at a bit pattern. All the possibilities of arranging two bits for discrete bit patterns. And the very neat thing about anything that's countable, anything that's enumerable, is that you can create a one-to-one -one correspondence with another thing that's countable, another set. Most often you will see the binary encoding of decimal numbers. So 0, 0 is corresponded quite naturally with the number 0, and then 0, 1 with 1, and then perhaps a little less naturally the binary digit 1, 0 with 2, and 1, 1 with 3. And it's kind of arbitrary, we could pick any ordering we want, but this one feels possibly the most natural. But we don't only have to match, uh, create a one-to-one -one correspondence with numbers, with the natural numbers, we can also correspond with anything else. So if we have two bits, we can easily represent four of anything, as long as we are consistent in our mapping between these values, as long as we go from uh, always from red is equal to this bit pattern, this bit pattern is equal to red, well now we have a way of encoding this bit pattern inside the cold heart of the machine. Similarly, we could encode different food items, whatever we want. We can now encode these patterns as long as we maintain this one-to-one -one mapping, this so-called isomorphism between these different sets. They're all equivalent, so that's nice. And even this is actually a bit of a, a simplification, because inside the computer there are transistors and flip-flops and all sorts of electronical hardware that is uh, uh, making all this work. So even the idea of bit patterns is a bit of an abstraction over varying voltages that are uh, held by these transistors or, or groupings of transistors in the computer. It's much easier to think at the level of, of bit patterns, where, where we will. And similarly, it's often much easier to think at a higher level concept, such as numbers. And as long as we can transform from our higher level concept to this lower level concept, well, then we have an isomorphism between the computery world of cold bits and the wet, amorphous, platonic world of ideas that are sort of run on our brains. And we don't really know fully how that all works yet, but we interpret these as whatever, emotions and images and feelings, general vibes. And if we create this one-to-one -one correspondence between bit patterns and ideas, we can essentially throw these things into the computer. But that's not everything we need. And there's one other idea I just wanted to briefly explore. So let's turn this on its side, uh, literally. And up top we'll have these bit patterns, and the bottom we'll have the brain. And I'll just make this a little longer, just so we can do a, a few more things with it. Uh, so now we have three bits, which can represent two to the third possible states, so eight possible states. And what we can do is we, we can take these two idea values, these mathematical objects, these numbers, and perform this mathematical operation, a so-called binary operation, which is going to be slightly confusing because it operates on two, uh, it is two operands. Uh, so anywho, we're going to add two and three, and we would get five. What's cool about this is that inside of the computer, there is a logic gate known as an adder, which given to bit patterns, the ones corresponding with two and three, will actually produce a third bit pattern. It'll output the binary pattern representative of five. To step back just a moment, we basically have this function. We can think of it as called encode, let's say. That'll take an idea, like numbers, and turn it into bits. And so if, if we encode our idea of two, it'll turn it into this bit pattern. If we encode the concept of three, it'll turn it into this bit pattern. And if we encode the result of adding 2 and 3 in our heads, which would be 5, well, 5 would encode to this bit pattern. But what's cool is, if we first encode 2, and then encode 3, turning them into their underlying bit patterns, and then combine them with this adder logic gate, that will output the bit pattern for 5. And if we represented this as a, a formula, what we get is this, which is that we can encode the result of some mathematical operation, and that's going to be equivalent to encoding each of the operands separately and combining their result with sort of the equivalent of that idea operation. So once we can uh, embed ideas into bits, well then maybe we can come up with operations on those bits in which this formula holds. And we can sort of, in a way, also not only encode the data, but encode operations on that idea. And this pattern is, is even more general to make it look crazy. So we'll go back and forth here and go through this slowly so this tracks. But this is, this is a concept in, in math known as a homomorphism which if you have some function, f here, that goes from one type a to one type b, and concretely in this case, f is our encode function that goes from numbers, that abstract mathematical object, to digital bits, which is b here. So we have encode from a to b, and we have two other binary operations in this case. So uh, this little green dot would represent our idea level mathematical add on numbers, and this red dot would represent the actual electric 
uh, logic gate there that operates on charges and transistors and whatnot. And so what this formula says is, if you have a function where you can take the result of some operation here, 2 plus 3 in this case, and get some result back, and then encode that result, and that's equivalent to first encoding, in this case, the 2, and then encoding the 3, and then combining that result with this, this red operation, if these things are equivalent, always, for any inputs for these types, well then, this is known as a homomorphism, and what it really means, though, the cool thing, and that makes computers useful to us, is that not only can we encode these ideas in the computer, sort of arbitrarily, via this isomorphism between this one-to-one -one mapping between bit patterns and some interpretation of them, as long as we're consistent in this back-and-forth mapping, but if we can also take an operation on ideas that live in idea space and figure out a way to preserve this homomorphism between the ideas and the idea operations to the bit representations and operations on bits, well then we've basically embedded the ideas and their operations inside of computers. We can embed whole domains inside of computers and operate on them, and then extract the results back out and interpret them. Which is, I don't know, it's pretty simple, but it's cool. And, I don't know, that's the power of computers, I guess. Um, hopefully that was kind of interesting. Alright, that's all I have. Bye.